Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tazawa Tanks. In a recent video, I had made a video talking about uh, my wish to create this new aquarium. I had this really kind of big idea in my head as far as what I wanted to build, how I wanted it to look, and some specific type of water animals that I was going to put in this tank. And I had asked you guys what you thought I should do as far as making tank space. Now, in my fish room down here, I have a lot of aquariums, but I didn't have really a lot of space to put a new large aquarium in there. And uh, I have a couple of aquariums where I thought I could either get rid of my peacock fish or get rid of my Mbuna. They're both African cichlids. And I put a poll on that video, and I'll put a link of that video up here so that you can watch it in case you missed it. But I put a poll and asked everyone's opinion. Lots of feedback from all of you. Most of you said I should keep the peacocks and get rid of the Mbuna. But there were quite a few people that still liked the Mbuna, and some people gave me some very sound advice to just make room for another tank. So that's what I did. Now, one of my concerns with adding another tank is I wanna have lots of room down here because this is really not like a working fish room anymore. It's kind of more of like an enjoying fish room where I come down, I hang out, I bring my laptop down here, just kind of hang and chill on my tank top and the shorts or whatever uh, because it's warm in here. And um, I just kind of chill and I don't like, I'm not doing like big breeding projects or anything anymore. But, you know, so with that, I want to have lots of space to be able to move around and not feel cramped. But there was one space uh, that we did have in a fish room where there was room, just enough room for me to squeeze in a 55 gallon aquarium. So that's what I did. So now I think what we'll do is I'll kind of quickly show you uh, what I did as far as putting the stand together and uh, the tank build which is kind of unique and something different that I've never done before. And then we'll kind of come back and wrap it up and we'll talk about what's gonna go in that tank and maybe get some feedback from you guys. So this is just a simple stand that I built. This is the same uh, style as the King Ape DIY, his wood stands. But uh, the only thing I did differently is I just attached some uh, plywood to it just to kind of hide some of the areas and make it black. Okay, well here is the tank right now, it's empty and this is the frame or the skeleton that I made. This is gonna be a shelf and there's a ramp. So um, this is gonna support the foam that we're going to spray. So essentially this goes inside of the tank and it has some suction cups on it that I built in right there. And it sticks to the inside of the tank and it will kind of hang down like that. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, spray some foam. So one of the things that I did here um, as I'm prepping to lay down the foam, and the foam that I'm using this time is uh, I'm, it's the same stuff, it's a great stuff, expanding foam, but this is pond and stone. So this is made for like, uh, you know, doing some work on ponds and water features. And the difference between this stuff and the other stuff that I was using before is that it comes out black instead of like a tan color like the other stuff. So what I did as I prepped um, is I put some plastic screen material on here and that's really to just kind of give the foam a barrier to kind of keep it in place as far as the shape is concerned. So now you can see that we kind of have the base structure. So this is the bottom. This would be the underneath of our shelf here. Um, so most of this you're not gonna really see, but I did just kind of want to make it look good for the most part. So if there are any, any angles that we catch on film, we won't see a bunch of PVC. 
So now what I need to do is I need to let this cure and then come back in a couple of hours. We'll take it off and we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours now and it's had time to dry and cure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it over. So now we're gonna be doing the top side and we'll kind of repeat the process with one little extra thing there. Here you can see that I uh, did a little bit of trimming to make sure that our suction cups will be able to uh, make contact with the glass. We've got a nice kind of straight back edge here and uh, it's all cured and ready to go. Okay, we're all set up. So let's talk a little bit about this tank. First off, this is brackish water. So right now it's not very salty. In fact, there's only one cup of salt in about 30 gallons of water. So very, very low salinity right now. Um, and that will be ramped up over the coming days and weeks. Um, but let's talk a little bit about how I was able to put this together right away, meaning this thing is ready to add fish or whatever else is going to go in here, which I'm not gonna talk about right now. But a couple things, I actually added some dry coral or it wasn't dry it was wet but you know um, this is essentially it was dry rock but now it's like live rock meaning that these were all in other aquariums so this piece was in the brackish mudskipper tank these pieces were in the african cichlid tank so um, they have a lot of bacteria on the surfaces already so um, you know this has bacteria on it those have bacteria on it which helps to kind of seed the system and get everything kind of ready to go. Additionally, the substrate, so there was sand in here, but I also added some substrate from this brackish system. So you can see where I scooped out a bunch of substrate and I dumped it in this tank. So that is gonna give the substrate kind of a jump start and let it kind of get, get seeded with bacteria. And that's also going to help break down the waste that's gonna be in there. In fact, you can actually see there's some snails in there that kind of came along for the ride and that's fine. I like those Malaysian trumpet snails in my brackish tanks. Um, and then the other thing that I did is I added a sponge filter. So here you can see, this is the Aquarium Co-op sponge filter. This sponge filter is ready to go. It's already been in another tank. I'm gonna make a video in the coming weeks about these sponge filters in particular because my entire fish room is now powered by these sponge filters. Sponge filters. And there's a couple of reasons why I like these. So I'm gonna make a video about those specifically. But anyway, this one already has bacteria on it. It is ready to go. Um, and how I do that, we'll walk over here, is in this tank, I have two sponge filters. And all I did is I replaced one. So I bought a new sponge filter from Aquarium Co-op, put it in there, right over there, and took the old one, shook off the rocks and stuff like that and put it right into the new tank. So that already has bacteria on it. Now, because this is brackish water and that was fresh water, a little bit different, but again, this is very low salinity and we're gonna be ramping that up. So um, no concerns there. So anyway, that's how I kind of jumpstart the tank. And then the last thing that I did is I added some of this Fritzzyme 7. This is a live nitrifying, nitrifying bacteria in a bottle and I poured some in the tank and that also gives the tank a jump start by adding some bottled bacteria. So we kind of have the whole thing where we've added some substrate with some bacteria in it from another established aquarium. We added some live rock essentially from other aquariums. We added a sponge filter that was already seeded and we added the uh, Fritz Dime. So we are good to go with adding some inhabitants in this tank. Now, I hope you like that build. Um, one thing that I wanna mention is with that um, shelf that I built, you can actually use that same design for turtles. So for those of you that keep turtles uh, in an aquarium and you need to build like a turtle island or a turtle basking area, um, that design could work for you because it is strong enough to hold the weight of you know, quite a heavy animal. So um, definitely an option for you. So. Uh, I'm not really showing you any close-ups right now. We're kind of far away and the tank's out of focus. It's right back there, right in that area. But um, we're not gonna look in there because there's already some animals in there. Um, super excited because I've never kept these before. 
and I got some stuff that's coming in the mail. So they were shipped out to me today. Hopefully they'll arrive tomorrow, I guess, tomorrow or the next day. Um, so fingers crossed and those coming in alive because they're really some special fish that a friend of mine is sending to me. So hopefully those come and then I have some ideas on some other fish that are going in there. So comment down below what you think I put in there already and comment down below what you think is gonna go in that tank because uh, this is gonna be very different than what I've done before. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, especially if you wanna see some new stuff that's coming up. I'm gonna be doing this whole tour of this fish room in detail and kinda talk about you know, what Aquarium Co-op did and what Dean did and maybe give you guys some pointers on what you could do with your own aquariums at home. Also, if you want to get some behind the scenes stuff or kind of see what's happening on this channel before the videos come out, make sure to follow me on Instagram, which is Tazawa underscore tanks, because oftentimes I'll post stuff on Instagram, sometimes a week or two before the video even drops. So if you happen to follow me on Instagram, you'll get kind of the behind the scenes stuff. I'll do a lot of live streams. I do a lot of live streams on Instagram, things like that. So definitely a fun place to hang out. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.